Welcome to Paratalk with the East Tennessee Ghost Seekers. Hair raising, spine tingling evidence covering the full supernatural spectrum. UFOs, cryptozoology, paranormal encounters. Have an experience to share? Call now, 865-264-0448. That's 865-264-0448. And now, here's your host, Stephen Brown, with fellow ETGS members, Steve Wiseman, Andrea Brown, and Jesse Arms. Well, 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 to territory. <laughs> All right, welcome, welcome. Welcome, everyone. It is Friday. It is Friday, thank goodness. And may the 4th be with you. Um, and also with you. Yes, you know what that makes tomorrow, right? Cinco de Mayo! No. Oh. No, Revenge of the 5th. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> yeah. No, it's Revenge of the 5th. Oh, my bad. Yeah. So um, tonight we are we have our new intro, which yes. sounds awesome. Give a huge shout out to Mike Howard. Thank you, Mike. Yes, you did awesome, buddy. However, however, we're down to we're down to. <laughs> you know, Steve is in Ohio um, helping well, family matters. Yeah, helping family matters. Yeah. So everybody, if you could just you know say a prayer for Steve and his family. Um, I can. We'll let him discuss if he wants to when he yeah. comes back. Um, and, and then Jesse's just not here. Jesse's just not here. Jesse's having a girls' night with one of her friends. Without me. Yeah. Sorry. Maybe next time. <sighs> Maybe next time. Yeah. But. But you got us. Yeah, you guys. We're have here. Us. Yeah. Yay. And my throat sounds a little hoarse. It does. Yeah, I think it's from all the pollen this week. Probably. I mean, it is just. <laughs> yep. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. It's been just. Rough. Yeah. This season has been already, I mean, just allergies. Yeah. Kick right. a bud. Yeah. Well, it's like, you know, we, your your Jeep is white. <laughs> no, it's yellow. Yeah. <laughs> my truck is supposed to be gray or silver. Yeah. Silver. Silver. Yeah. And it's like silver with a yellow tint. Yeah. I actually got in the car this morning and I looked, I was like, well, I guess the Jeep is yellow right now. Mm-hmm. And I had just washed it too. Yeah. I was like... Yeah, lucky for you. Mine hasn't been washed in like a month and a half. Yeah, well. Mine is like 14 shades. I finally had somebody in my passenger seat to pull in my side mirror. (laughs) That's sad. That's really, really sad. (laughs) You have to wait till you have someone in the passenger seat to wash your car. I know. But then I'd have to get out and push it in myself and then push it back out. And, you know, Mm -hmm. it's just so much work. I'm turning down your... You turn oh, me yeah. down. Yeah, because you're a little loud. And you're not. Now I can barely hear me. Just hang on. I'm trying to get this fixed. It's like, for some reason, yours was clipping really bad. So hopefully all that airs out in the podcast here. When you were getting loud, it was getting really loud. They but, like to hear me. But I deal with that all the time. Ugh, yeah. I know. Yeah. You should be used to it by now. I know. I should. But. <laughs> but, so, uh, we made a big announcement this past Sunday. Yes. Uh, we, ETGS, we are going to host an event at the magnificent Hells Bar Dam Marina. The haunted Hells huh. Bar Dam. Yes. Uh, Hells Bar is amazing. Um, it's going to be on July 21st. Uh-huh. It's going to run from 6 p.m. till 3 a.m. Tickets are only 40 bucks, guys. Seriously, you can't go anywhere for no. 40 bucks to no. investigate that long. You can't go on a date for that's 40 bucks. That's true. You know, I, I mean, mean, that's like dinner alone. Yeah. And then your movie's like 80 bucks. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean... 
All you guys, girls out there, you know, if you want to do something fun Uh on a Saturday night and hang out with a bunch of people who are fun, not just us, but everybody who's showing up and Jeff and Vicky, the guys that run the place. Absolutely. I mean, this is going to be awesome. I'm so excited. Yeah. The the place never lets anyone down. And, you know, just to back that up, um, we have a guest on the show tonight. Yes. Steve Phillips from Entity Vortex Paranormal Society. EVPS. Uh, EVPS. So everybody go check out their Facebook page. Um, Steve's a real good guy. Um, Haven't talked to him verbally, um, but we've been messaging for... A while. Yeah, about two months now. Yeah. Real good guy. Um, And him and his team just went down there Wednesday night Mm -hmm. investigated. Um, but that's not why he's on here tonight. Tonight, he's on here to talk about basically a true crime that happened in his hometown. It's and, creepy. Yeah. I mean, true well, crime in general is creepy, yeah. but... But this is kind of disgusting and creepy. Yeah. So, but I mean, we'll get all the those, whole true yeah. crime thing. But we'll get all those details when we talk to Steve, yeah. uh, which will be here in just a few minutes. Um... Anything else going on in our world that you can think of? Uh, sorry, job. my my mind has gone blank. I'm I'm reeling from two weeks of just craziness at my work. So, what are you doing? What 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 are you doing? I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. No, seriously though. I mean we. We're building up a, a hefty calendar, you know. Yeah. I mean, of course, we've got a couple months until our event. Mm-hmm. And until our event, guys can still go down oh, to absolutely. the Bar and investigate. You can go hang out with the Gateway Boys. Which their event is it's, May 26th. Yeah, just a few weeks out. Um, they're an awesome group. Yeah. And me and Steve are going to go down and hang out with them during their event. Hopefully, hopefully me and Jesse will have our girls' night. Yeah. <laughs> and, and hopefully we can get a few of those guys to come hang out at our event. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're they're awesome. They're a great group. Mm-hmm. They're hilarious. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Well, they're just like us. They are. Yeah. They're good they're balls nuts. just so like us. If you guys want to come and investigate the paranormal with people who know what's going on, mm-hmm. who are experienced, but promise a good time. And probably a pretty good scare. You need to come hang out and and do Gateway's event and come back in July and do ours. Absolutely. And then, of course, you know, we're trying to work out something with Gateway to do in September. We'll give details on that when Mm -hmm. it's settled. And then, of course, in October, you know, I know it's months away, but in October, we've got Screamville for three weekends. You know, we're going to be out there. And I'm so excited to see what Doug has put is putting together right now because he is already he's been working on it yeah yeah he's been busy doug's a busy man he is and i know it's gonna be awesome yeah yeah so everybody go and check out uh screamville haunted attraction on facebook um and and there you won't be disappointed when you go (laughs) no no, screamville's awesome i mean we went through it last year oh my gosh and one of our a little you, you may have, <laughs> yeah. Well, one of our old investigators, um, um, she took off and we had to yeah, grab I'd her wrangle and her rest- in. drain her because she was going to run. <laughs> the opposite direction. Yeah, yeah straight through the cornfield. <laughs> Wrong way. <laughs> but, I mean, and, you know, it's a it's a corn maze. Not really, yeah, but it's a, it's- it's a cornfield attraction. But it's not just walking through the cornfield. No, field. there's I mean, they, buildings. Yeah, and Doug gets in there, and, and him and his crew, they get in there, and they build these these awesome. little, little buildings in there. There was a schoolhouse last year. I, they put a lot of time and effort yeah, into this, I mean, and it's it, amazing. What could be creepier than an old schoolhouse? Yeah. In For a, real. <laughs> an old schoolhouse. In, in the middle of a cornfield? <laughs> yeah. I'm just thinking children of the corn. You know? uh, for real. I swear, anytime I go near like a grown-up cornfield, I'm like, mm, oh, what's, in, what's back there? Where the hell's Malachi? Go, go, Where go, is Malachi? Go. 
that little <laughs> bastard's going to jump out and he's, he's going to kill me because I'm an adult. He's, I'm an adult now. He's going to kill me. Yeah. I'd have been fine if I was 12. <laughs> he would have just recruited me then. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. But, yeah, we're going to take a quick break. And for you guys, it'll be super quick. And we're going to come back. When we come back, we will have Steve Phillips from EVPS. So you guys hang on and stay tuned. You're listening to Paratalk with Easton Seco Seekers, a new perspective in Paranormal Talk Radio. Hey, it's Steven from Paratalk. Do you have a story to share? Call us at 865-264-0448 to explain your paranormal experience, or to share your favorite ghost story, or to even give us a topic you'd like us to discuss. We understand if you want to keep anonymous, so the choice is yours to share your name with your story. So call 865-264-0448 now, and have your experiences heard on the next episode of Paratalk, Paratalk, Paratalk. All right, we are back. We're back. All right, I'm excited. Me too. This is going to be fun. It is. I'm so excited. I mean, honestly, I'm really interested to learn this story that we're about to hear. Seriously, this is not something that I've actually heard of, so any kind of true story, I'm like all about. Oh, yeah. (laughs) All right, so I guess without further ado, here is Steve Phillips from EVPS. Welcome, Steve. Welcome, Steve. Hey, guys. How's it going? It's going great, Good. brother. Good. So, let's let everyone get to know a little more about you. Um, so, well, how long have you been into uh, the paranormal? I, I started back in, it was uh, probably about late 2013. My uh, in-laws, they actually have a little paranormal team out of Athens, uh, uh, CSA Paranormal. I joined up with them, just uh, trying to get used to being out there in the field, trying to see what I was going on. I really didn't believe in too much of it. I just thought it was a lot of people out here. Just, mm-hmm. I guess you could say just messing around. Um, but then you find your mind gets changed, huh? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, I would actually uh, went out to... A place called a Whispering Pines out in uh, Decatur, and uh, started out up there and just had amazing, amazing time out there. Uh, just all the um, evidence that we came across, and I was just from that point on, I was just hooked. I mean, the bug bit me big time. Yeah, it doesn't take much. I mean, you spend usually if you can make it through one bad investigation and then do a good investigation, you're hooked. Because then you had the good yeah. and the bad, you know, because we've sat right. in places. I mean, dude, we have spent, you know, $1,000 to go investigate Waverly Hills and sit there all night long and not hear anything but crickets, you know, and get home, mm-hmm. go through the evidence and nothing but crickets. But the but, experience. But the experience itself, yeah, is, is worth oh, the yeah. $1,000, you know, that, so what, lo- what locations have you investigated? I'm sorry? What locations have you investigated? Uh, well, we actually, uh, like I said, we started out doing, um, with my uh, in-laws team, uh, we investigated uh, some cemeteries, uh, fairly local, uh, Whispering Pines, uh, Whit Cemetery, out toward um, uh, Reliance. Um, then uh, a couple of uh, uh, Cherokee Indian sites um, mm-hmm. over around uh, Bonner area. Then uh, they finally decided, hey, it's time to take him out to South Pittsburgh Hospital. Uh, oh, yeah. right there, South Pittsburgh. <laughs> uh, that, that right there became my home away from home mm-hmm. for probably about four years. Oh, wow. yeah. Uh, we got that's where we were going out there probably uh, at, at least once a year. We were going out there for four years straight. And, wow. Uh, wow. Once we actually went out twice and uh, just the uh, evidence that we've caught out there is absolutely amazing. Yeah. I can and totally it's, it's agree. It's that we... We might uh, we could be losing it. I mean, it's definitely a shame. 
Yeah, it, it sucks. I mean, it really does. Know, and you know, OSPH is what brought us together because you know we had posted that we were getting ready to go there, and you were telling me that you were going to be going like a couple of weeks after we were going to be going. And right. then, yeah, we were actually supposed to go uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday this week. I was supposed to be yeah. going back home uh, tomorrow. <laughs> oh, oh man, man, that sucks. But. But yeah. out of that, it opened up a whole new venue, just like it did for us. I mean, mm-hmm. you guys went down to Hell's Bar Wednesday night. Yes. And how was had, that? Um, uh, it was actually a, a real good experience. Um, uh, it had been on my bucket list for quite a while. And um, me with my in laws team, they were kind of leery about going down uh, with the marina being down there. So. Um, I finally got a chance to uh, tag along or have some friends tag along with me. Mm-hmm. And uh, we all took off, went down. I'm kind of a one man team. Uh, my wife, she joins me from time to time whenever she can get up the nerves. <laughs> Bless her heart. <laughs> <laughs> I had some pretty bad experiences, uh, her and I together. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, so we uh, took off, went down there Wednesday, and just uh, we had a blast. Uh, caught uh, an audible uh, voice come from uh, Linda's room up there. Nice. And nice. Had, um, Ovilus was going going off like crazy. Um, I actually had uh, two Ovilus, uh, an Ovilus 3, and I've got the Ovilus 5B. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of them said squeeze, the other one said hug. Wow. And I said, Linda, so are you trying to give me a, a hug? I said, are you trying to uh, give me a big squeeze of a hug? And it came to him and said kiss. Oh, wow. Oh, said, you better not be giving me a kiss. <laughs> and after that, <laughs> nothing. I mean, wow. there was absolutely nothing after that. Wow. Scared her off. Yep. She yeah. knew she knew you were taken and she, she went away. She was yeah. like, forget it. <laughs> yeah. I have no chance here. <laughs> yeah. Uh I had actually messaged Steve yesterday to see how his investigation went. He was telling me, you know, that he went down with his buddy Steven. <laughs> so they had a Steve and a Steven. Yep. I I thought yeah. that was quite humorous that yeah. there is a an overabundance of Steves and Stevens <laughs> in the paranormal field. <laughs> yeah, so so we're gonna start up we're gonna start up a, a little side project. It's gonna be the the four S paranormal. <laughs> yeah, it would work. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it may stand for shit, 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 shit. You know, <laughs> yeah. who knows? But, um, so, how long have you had EVPS? Uh, we started. Uh, the full name is uh, Entity Vortex Paranormal Society. Um, we actually branched out from my uh, in-laws group at the time we were living in uh, Lenore City, and uh, just down the road from you guys, and. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I said, it was just uh, me and my wife that were doing it there for a while. Uh, we branched out from them uh, due to the drive from uh, Lenore City down to Athens every single weekend. It just right. got to be too much. Yeah. Uh, a lot of gas and things. And, um, so we just branched out and kind of started doing uh, some things up toward the Knoxville area. Uh, we actually got to go to uh, the Ramsey House and investigate. Oh, nice. There. Um, did you do that the with kind of uh, Did you do that with uh, J. Adam Smith or did you have it to yourself? Yes, yes. Yeah, uh, we went up there with uh, uh, Jay Adam Smith, okay. and uh, I had a great time up there. And uh, we'd actually caught a uh, uh, had the uh, SB7 Spirit Box up there, and we were walking from uh, one bedroom uh, into the other up on the second floor, and we we're passing. I think they call it the linen room up there, and you hear a child's voice come through. Uh, one of the girls that uh, was on his team said, uh, "It's sad to think that he's eight years old." Mm-hmm. And I was, no sooner she says that, you hear this child's voice come through it. And we still today can't make out what it says, but you hear it's a, a small boy's voice. Oh, man. It. Wow. I have wanted to go to the Ramsey well, house. Uh, let me give you a little little advice on those uh, those EVPs you can't figure out. Post that shit uh, on Facebook and real. ask people to, to try to decipher what's being said. Because I know our buddies at okay. Gateway, they had one... Um, I can't remember where they had investigated. Um, I think it was at the, was it Wilden? It may have been Wilden Manor or whatever. Um, but they had an EVP that they couldn't couldn't decipher what it was. And they put it out there. And, dude, there was like, like 100 people comment. And I would say 90 of them all had the same exact response. Chloroform. So. Wow. Yeah. So throw that EVP out there on your page and ask people, you know. Or you could do like we do sometimes because, um, you know, children have like a higher uh, level 
Uh, they can hear higher levels than adults, and we get our uh, twelve-year-old right. to listen to. <laughs> we do, yeah, yeah. There's there's been many times we've been like, "Hey, Hayden, come here, put these headphones on, and see what you're hearing. <laughs> Tell us what you hear." Because <laughs> he's mean, a good sport. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, he doesn't want anything to do with it, but he'll listen to the EVPs to tell us what he thinks. You know? <laughs> but he's like, no, I'm not yeah, going. Yeah, I'll have to try that one out. <laughs> yeah. But, um, so, the one of the main reasons we got you on here this week is you have an awesome story you want to share. Uh, true story uh, called, uh, I guess the, the complete title of it is The Tragedy at Tin Can Holler. Yes. And yeah, like uh, you had mentioned this to me and I'm like, yeah, I got to hear this, this whole story. And you were like, well, it'd be easier for me to, to call you and tell you. And I was like, well, how about we just do this? You call me and we'll do it on the podcast and you can let everybody hear it and get this story out there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely an, an amazing story. Um, like I said, that was um, one that my in-laws had actually got me in, interested in and it's a place I've been drawn back to many, many times. And that's, um, it actually started over in, uh, a cater, uh, just right past the, uh, I believe it's the Meg's McMain County line. Mm-hmm. And, um, out on a little place called a uh, Brickle Ridge, <clears throat> there was a, uh, mother and a father. Uh, the father's name was Tyree and the mother's name was uh, Mary Jane. Um, they ended up having a daughter by the name of, uh, Grace Sense. Well, Grace over time, uh, as she was growing up, her father, uh, well, the mother, she actually became ill uh, around uh, Gracie's, that's uh, what everybody calls her, is Gracie, mm-hmm. around Gracie's um, probably early teen years. And he, uh, the mother, like I said, she became very ill. Then Gracie, she dropped out of school to help take care of her mom. Well, whenever this happened, Tyree, uh, the dad, he started becoming infatuated with the daughter and started having feelings toward her. And then Gracie mistaken his love and sexual advances as her dad showing her love. Oh, wow. So, yeah. So uh, it got to the point that if Gracie wasn't doing his sexual favors that he had asked, then she would be abused. And it got to the point that it was going way beyond incest. Oh. And uh, according to uh, the book, um, the book was actually written by uh, Gracie's, I believe that would be her uh, granddaughter, uh, Rosetta Mallory. Wow. And, so, and where can our uh, listeners, is this book available like on Amazon or someplace where our listeners oh, yes, can pick it up? Uh, yes, it, it's uh, available on uh, all the major uh, book sites as far as I know. Um, you can actually pick it up as well at the, um, oh, what is that? I believe it's like a, a historic society out in uh, Decatur. Oh, okay, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, they have it out there. And uh, they actually have a, a quilt out there as well that uh, Gracie made while she was in prison. Uh, oh, wow. She was, yeah, she was she was a pretty bad lady. Uh, over the years, she had had uh, many affairs with many men, had uh, several children. I think she had a total of, like, maybe six or eight kids. Wow. Wow. Uh, one of them, um, well, uh, one of them being uh, Sig Mallory and... Uh, also known as Sig Sims, uh, he uh, kind of went by both names, uh, different aliases and things. So, um, but as Gracie was growing up, uh, once she had uh, gotten to her later teen years, she started drinking uh, very heavily. Uh, started getting into um, going out here doing like a, a money laundering scheme. Uh, wow. Well, I mean, then, the, the girl's head had to be messed up dealing with that her whole childhood. Yeah. Um, today, she would, uh, according to uh, what Rosetta wrote, uh, she would have been considered uh, schizophrenic and bipolar. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. Just from, from all the things that had, uh, her dad had put her through. Yeah. Um, and like I said, she'd taken up drinking very heavily. Then uh, she started these um, uh, mail schemes, uh, started uh, doing money laundering and things, and had eventually been arrested um and done, I believe it was uh, 18 months in prison at uh, Missouri State Penitentiary. Wow. Hmm. Yeah, and, the, yeah. The bloodiest so, 47 acres. Yep. Yeah. So uh, she'd done about 18 months out there. Uh, once she got out, uh, she started right back in uh, to the um, to the schemes and things. And then about the time she was around 45, uh, she uh, started doing, um, she pretty much was doing prostitution. Mm. Wow. And, um, 
previously and then uh once she got out she's like well i'm a little too old to be doing this stuff now so she started doing um you know, like personal ads in the paper mm-hmm. and asking uh these people like that were passing through town to come out you know hey i need some help out here on my farm if you come out here and help out you know i'll, I'll pay you greatly for it so these guys would get out there and nobody would ever hear of them again oh and the story behind it is that she would get them up there lure them up there through the uh, ads in the paper and all these promises and they would do the work for her and when it came time to pay them then she would go and uh, slip arsenic in their food and kill them wow. oh my gosh a, yeah uh and while all this is going on her children were actually locked up inside of a broom closet over next to the fireplace what and the only thing that they had to eat was uh, apple butter and a loaf of bread and just a pot to piss and shit in oh wow. my gosh so that's, um ugh. That pisses me yeah, off just was, uh, just hearing it, you know. I mean, ugh. yeah. Mm. And um, she had a, I believe it was a cousin of hers. Uh, it was a relative of hers uh, somehow, and uh, uh, he was mentally handicapped. And um, she would lure him to come up there and make it a game with him to go and dispose of these bodies up along Brickle Ridge. And supposedly there's a uh, a large hole up there that just drops straight down into the ground. And she would have him to dispose of the bodies up, up there, and she would take the money and things and the clothing and bury them up next to a barn. Oh wow. my gosh. And over the years, um, people have been uh, claiming to see spirits uh, walking around out next to the barn, which the house and the barn are still uh, located out off of uh, Sims Road. You can drive by, which there's a family uh, that's actually living in the house now. And, uh, you know, just. Uh, it's a very tragic story on that end. Then he just went on throughout the family and continued with uh, Sig Sims. Uh, he married a lady named Eliza, and he was pretty much in the same thing that Gracie was in. He was like, um, you know, his mom's right hand man, and mm-hmm. he was always involved in pretty much everything that she had done. So um, he ended up doing time in Brushy over the years and had um, eventually killed his wife, Eliza, over in uh, what's called uh, the Tin Can Holler area or mm-hmm. what is now the uh, project area over in um, Athens. Wow. Wow. So is there any and like a my, like a head count on how many she actually killed? Uh, well, we've been out to a Whispering Pines which is actually where Grace is buried and ironically she's buried right next to her dad and uh, their graves are side by side so you know that's got to be some Ooh. unrest oh. there. Yeah. And uh, we've got a response of, of more than 15 men. Wow. Wow. That's, that's insane. And, that's crazy. Yeah. Well, uh, um, Sig, uh, there was one night he had, uh, got very drunk. He forced uh, Eliza, his wife, to uh, drink a lot of moonshine with him on the weekends. Uh, cops were called out to their house almost every single night on the weekends uh, for arguments, fights, and things. Uh, for Sig beating his wife, and got to the point the kids were sent off to uh, I believe it was called Holston Homes or some uh, yeah. something like that. It's like mm-hmm. a, um, a foster home area, right? Uh, up in like uh, northeast Tennessee, mm-hmm. uh, I believe it's around uh, Johnson City or Newport. Mm-hmm. So uh, they were sent off up there, and <clears throat> whenever they came back, um, they were at home. Everything was fine for a little while. And Sig had started drinking one night and um, just beat the crap out of Eliza. And uh, she had actually run across the road, I guess, uh, to um, a guy named Ed, ran over to his house. And it was a white guy and a black guy that were uh, staying together. And she, or, um, Sig bust in and calls her an F and N lover. And uh, accuses her of being with the black guy and takes her and just starts beating her inside of Ebb's house and drags her out uh, by her hair, clothes, whatever and uh, proceeds to stomp her face in right outside this house. Oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh. Which became the tragedy in King Ken Holler. Wow. And um, ironically, my uh, grandfather-in-law, this would be my uh, father-in-law's uh, dad, he was uh, very young when this happened, but uh, he actually witnessed all that happened. I've uh, heard the stories from him on everything, and it's, so I've actually had, you know, firsthand accounts. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, that is 
disturbing. That yeah, to yeah. say the very least. Why? And, and so how, that's just a very mild um, story compared to what the book. And uh, there's actually a DVD that's out as well um, that goes into a little bit more depth. And uh, like I said, those uh, can actually be picked up over at the um, uh, Decatur uh, Historic Society, I believe. Huh. Wow. And how old was she but, when uh, she was murdered? Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think. I believe she was in her mid thirties. I think she's about thirty six. Oh, so young. She was murdered. It's my age. Yeah, yeah, that's your age. Well, guess if I get bored, I have to smash your face in. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. I'd get you first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, so, you so, it. like. On the paranormal spectrum of this, so they hear do people? You said people he, see things and hear things, uh, like the of the men that have been killed. Well, um, I was actually going out. Uh, anytime we go out to that location, I always uh, contact dispatch just to let them know that we're going to be out in that area, mm-hmm. right? In case they get any calls or anything. That's smart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, I always try to, you know, do things like that just to uh, give law enforcement a heads up. And uh, there's been several times they've actually come out and hung out with us and watched us investigate. Cool. And um, uh, Whispering Pines is actually, uh, uh, Whispering Pines Cemetery is actually just on the other side of the ridge from where Gracie lived. Wow. And it's within, I'd say, maybe a quarter mile Mm -hmm. uh, just on the other side of the ridge. So um, we've been out there um, investigating and... I believe this was probably the third time that I'd went out. We had a flashlight that was set up on Gracie's grave. And now she was attracted to men that had uh, a lot of money, that were dressed nice, very well-mannered and things, and <clears throat> to try to get that money off of her. Well, the amount that I was out there, I just got paid, had my full paycheck in my wallet. I had brand new clothes on, uh, looking sharp, had a haircut and everything. And this flashlight just comes on by itself. Huh. Wow. And... Uh, that had been set up on a grave. Mm-hmm. So my father-in-law, he tries to approach it, and as he does, it just goes, starts going dim. So he backs up, it kind of flickers back on a little bit. My uh, wife and my sister-in-law, they step up that way, does the same thing, kind of flickers, almost goes out, and they step back. And my father-in-law said, Steve said, uh, why don't you take a walk up there? So I started walking up there, and as, the closer I got, about the only way that I can describe this is almost like a canopy light underneath it, like a gas station. Mm-hmm. Yeah take one of those big LED lights and just shine it right in my face. Wow. Like this small mag light flashlight. I mean, this thing was so bright, it gave me a headache for three days afterwards. No way. Oh, my gosh. And it, it, it was horrible. That's intense. Um, not long after that happened, um, it was probably maybe an hour or so later, uh, there was a, a group that came through, and they were just out. It was actually like a little wedding party. Uh, they were out after their wedding trying to find something fun to get into and decided to come over to Whispering Pines. And they pulled up. We were showing them how we investigate. And we uh, tell some amazing EVPs uh, out there with them. And we were all, um, they were all getting ready to leave for the night. And uh, we were getting ready to pack up our things as well. And I was sitting there holding my wife. It got kind of cool that night. I believe it was around uh, August of 2014. Mm-hmm. And uh, getting kind of cool out that night, and I was holding my wife in front of me, and all of a sudden it just felt like Mike Tyson just comes up and just hits me right in the gut. What? Wow. And he me on, yeah. Oh I my god! I mean, I hit the ground. My father-in-law said, "Get him the hell out of here now!" Wow. And so that group, they went ahead and they left. And, <laughs> and they're like, "I'm uh, out." <laughs> packed up everything. Yeah, we we got the hell out of Dodge. That's, that's so, well, intense. What wow. that? I said that's intense. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> that was just kind of a mild uh, thing compared to what happened whenever uh, we came back. Uh, that night, we just decided to stay at my in-law's house um, since we were so close. It's just a few miles down the road from their house. And um, so we stayed with them that night. And the next morning, I woke up. And me and my wife, I mean, we we never argued. I mean, we, we've always, you know, tried to see each other's side. I mean, but this morning uh, when I woke up, I just, I had hatred. I didn't want to be around her. I didn't want to be around the kids. Oh, my said, gosh. If you, if the kids, I'm gone. I oh. took both the phones that we had, brand new cell phones, broke both of them in half, and okay. threw them in the console of my truck, and I took off and was going back to the North Sea. Oh, my gosh. And 
the entire time uh, they're trying to text me um, from uh, my mother-in-law's phone and my father-in-law's phone, then, hey, come back, we need to talk about this. You know, you could have an attachment from last night. And I never got the messages, but because both phones are broken. Right. So, but somehow both phones are responding back. I'm at the cinema. Leave me alone. I told you I'm at the cinema. What? Yeah. And at I mean, the cinema? Who, who this day and age even uses the word cinema? cinema? I, know, I was That's like, wait, what, crazy. cinema? <laughs> so uh, my wife, she, um, she wasn't too far behind me. She was maybe about 10 minutes behind me. And um, at the time I used to run a convenience store in uh, uh, Loudon. And uh, so I stopped off there to get some coffee. And I really didn't remember much about what had actually happened. So my wife, she pulls up and she says, Steve, what the hell is going on? I said, what are you talking about? And she said, the way that you left mom's this morning. And I said, I have no idea what you're talking about. And she said, look at these messages. She said, I have mom's phone right here. Look at these messages we've been sending you. She said, and she said need to get your ass down here and we need to find out what's going on. And I said, for uh, three days after that, I had the worst splitting migraine I have ever had in my life. And I, I've never had a migraine in my life up to that point. Wow. Holy crap. And from that point on, I, I swore the place off for probably about two years and uh, have just recently started going back. Wow. Yeah, because you totally, you totally had an attachment. Uh, yeah. 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 That was a very strong attachment. Yeah. I yeah. bet whatever hit you, that... That's that was yeah, it. I mean, just just tell the story right now. I mean, I have chills just just all over me. Dude, yeah. I've got chills right now. I'm yeah. listening to it. <laughs> yeah, I got chills listening to it. That's yeah. That's that's Morris Mill shit's what that is. It is. I mean, and like this story, it reminds me a lot of Morris Mill. Um, Morris Mill was a hotel that we have investigated. Uh, Steve's actually investigated this place thirteen or fourteen times. Dude, he got so ad- ad- wow. addicted to this place. He would go up there by himself and would stay three or four days and investigate all alone for three or four days at a time. But, wow. yeah, I mean, like the whole, like the arsenic thing uh, that you told us, mm-hmm. the the first convicted female serial killer in the United States started her killing spree inside that hotel. And she would wow. make candies and she put arsenic in him and she killed little kids adults it didn't matter she wasn't picky about it and she's buried like a quarter of a mile half a mile from the motel um but yeah i mean steve was addicted to that place and he had some crazy shit happen to him while we were investigating there i mean we've had like one of our big equipment cases thrown like 15 probably close to yeah 15 to 20 feet thrown so i yeah wow. yeah this place sounds a lot like that it does mm-hmm. creepy wow that's so awesome. so when's the last time you went there i was actually uh just a few weeks ago i uh, picked up my Oculus 5b and um i tried it out at home which i have wi-fi um and actually, ironically, behind my house, within like maybe 10 feet of my house, is uh, one of the largest cemeteries in Athens. Really? One of the largest and oldest. Wow. <laughs> and, um, I think the yeah, trip we, to Steve's house is in order. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, <clears throat> I told my wife, I said, well, I'm, I said, I'm just going to run out here for a few minutes and just check this thing out just to see, you know, make sure I don't, I didn't pick up like a word generator. I, I was real leery of this thing, had waited years to buy it. Mm-hmm. And so finally, I just I bought this version, and I was trying to at home. I was like, "Oh man, I just I picked up a word generator, and you know, I've wasted all this money." So uh, emailed the company that said, "You can take this thing out to like a local cemetery that you might investigate, and see what you pick up." So I was like, "Well, I'm not going to go to the one in my backyard. I'll go out here to Whispering Pines and see what's going on out there." Mm-hmm. So I pull up, I uh, set it down, and it was kind of quiet for a few minutes. And after about five minutes, um, again, I was out there alone by myself. And just had an eerie feeling the entire time I was there, just something watched me from behind. And so I'm constantly turning around. The next thing I know, it said, do and grandma. I was like, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I go, no. um, I was kind of making some jokes about it. And I turned it off and I turned it back on to reset it. And it set it up on the uh, steps of the cemetery. And uh, about another five minutes went by and it came through and it said, me. 
I said, well, what do you need? And immediately it said, soul, master. Oh, what? And I was like, yeah, I said, I think I'm going to head on out after this and after <laughs> everything I've experienced. Yeah. Thanks for everything. I'm gone. <laughs> Appreciate that. Uh, just and, shit kittens. Uh, hmm. Yeah. So I'd, uh, uh, all I had out, out there with me was my uh, uh, EVP recorder and my uh, Oculus. Mm-hmm. So I forgot to turn the Oculus off, just set it on the uh, um, upper dash of my Jeep and was getting ready to pull out. And there was uh, some debris from uh, like some branches and stuff that was on this old dirt road. And as I was running over them, as soon as I ran over it, it said uh, sneak <sighs> and then it said uh, sticks. Oh my wow. gosh. So I don't know if it, some thought I was trying to sneak around and <laughs> I was commenting over the sticks that I was running over, but I reached up, I turned that thing off, I got I got out of there. Wow. Yeah, I'd be done. Uh, I told him, I told him <laughs> off, I said, I'll never step foot up there alone again. That's crazy. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so do you do you like the Ovulus 5B? Yeah, uh, so far, I mean, it's actually been a, a really cool piece of equipment. It's uh, almost like a six in one. It, uh, it does the. Uh, a uh, little vibration sensor. Mm-hmm, the it does geophone. The, um, uh, yes. Uh, does uh, that. And does it have the true false? Meter. Yes, it's called true false proximity meter. And uh, it's almost like a, um, a spirit box that's on there that it does. Mm-hmm. And See, it also does the dictionary mode as well. Yeah. See, we have the Ovulus 5. And I think the only difference between yours and ours is probably the proximity meter. Um, yeah. Yeah, I was. I'm sorry. I was like a little con- like I'd not. I've never heard of the obvious five B. So I was like, I was like, I gotta Google search this. So I'm looking at it right now. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got yeah, it's definitely a neat little piece of equipment. It's, like I said, I was really area buying one. I just I was like, oh, this thing's probably just a word generator. And mm-hmm. I've seen it used on everything from a uh, uh, Tennessee Reef Chasers using it. Uh, ghost asylum, ghost hunters. I mean, you know, I mm. watched them all use it. And I was, and it's probably just a work generator. And so I finally got the nerve up to buy one. And it's um, actually while we were down at uh, Hell's Bar, um, the group of girls that was with us, they were sitting at a table and uh, they had the Oculus 3 and I had the Oculus 5B. And uh, one of them came to us at female and the other one said females. Huh. At wow. The same time. Wow. You said, in, was that and, in the uh, tunnels? And yes. Uh, as soon as you walk through the, uh, once you walk through the main door and uh, walk down the uh, first uh, tunnel there, and uh, there was a table set off to the yeah. uh, left hand side. Yeah. Yeah. See that and, at um, that area right there. That's where uh, um, when we went down, that's where Jesse felt like something grab her face and like brush back oh. over her hair. Uh, Steve was totally frozen stiff, like he was like when that was happening to her. She was reaching mm-hmm. for him, and he tried to reach for her, and he couldn't even reach to her. He, he just froze solid, just like, you know, wow. like Mr. Freeze hit him, you well, know? Well, and when we uh, were with uh, Gateway, mm. they had their um, REM pod REM going pod. off. It, Dude, went it went off for 25 minutes, minutes straight, and it, it ended up killing brand new batteries within 25 minutes. It was insane. Yeah. Insane. Yeah. I mean, that... That, that little hallway. area oh, right there the t- is that crazy. Tunnel is insane. Let's see, like when yeah. we went down the first time, uh, we were you know setting up our DVR cameras, and we had set one up there in the tunnel, and went back and we were looking at it, and it wasn't the right angle. So I told Steve, I was like, here, I'll take this two way. Yeah, I'll go in there and adjust it. And you let me know when when we got it right. So mm-hmm. here I go taking my happy ass in there, and I'm setting you know adjusting the camera, and then I look around, and I'm like what the fuck i'm in here by myself <laughs> <laughs> and i'm looking around it's like you know you get the most eerie like something's coming right at you inside that tunnel i mean yeah. it yeah. and being in there by yourself is not a good feeling at all and jeff the owner no. he'll walk through there did he walk through there with you did jeff oh yeah uh, did he, he walked through there several times by himself yeah and did he ever do it with his flashlight off uh, I'm, I'm not sure if he did it with the light off. Um, he will. He, um, he'll walk that whole did, place uh, with two fingers. Through what's, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he said. He said. I, he said. I know this place out the back of my hand. He said. I'll just walk straight down through there. Yeah. 
he, know, he puts crazy. <laughs> he puts two fingers on the wall and walks and that was funny when he did that I he was, did it with us i started and, walking down and i was like okay following down and I about face planted into the wall. <laughs> Even though I had my fingers on the wall, I about face planted, and then, um, and then he turned on his flashlight, and we were like thirty feet away. And yeah. he's, I was like, "Holy crap! Did yeah. we not make it to the end?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he turns off the lights. We turn off our lights, and we were going to do the same thing he does and walk down through there with two fingers on the wall. Baby and, steps. <laughs> and we're thinking, you know, we're keeping right up with him. He turns his light on. He's like between 35 and 50 feet in front of us we're like what the shit yeah yeah i'm not that i'm not to that point yet (laughs) no no we've been down there four times yeah four times in the last month and a half Mm -hmm. and it's yeah i'm still not that comfortable where i'm gonna walk i don't even like walking in there by myself yeah yeah Yeah, i'm six uh, six four two eight Yeah, uh, well, we're sitting at that table, though. Um, the girls that actually uh, that were with us, they got up and uh, walked off to go use the restroom. And uh, me and my friend Stephen, we were sitting there at the table. And right as the girls left, uh, you hear a uh, squeeze and hug come through. And I said, Linda, I said, is that you? I said, are you trying to give me a hug? Or are you trying to squeeze my neck? And which I don't wear a necklace at all. I just wear two mm. T-shirts at all times. And mm. It just felt like almost like a necklace was around my neck, just kind of pulling down a little bit. And you could feel the... Uh, press on the back of my neck just kind of getting pulled down a little bit of something wow and then it comes through and it says uh kiss and it came through on both obvious saying kiss now that's trying crazy to give me a kiss? <laughs> and uh, so that's that's where all that right there had happened at and uh it was just, it was pretty wild well that's kind of cool okay so you guys were in the the tunnel when that happened so they got mm-hmm. interaction with linda in the tunnel yeah and the kids hall down at that other end of the tunnel the little kids yeah. section where they have all the toys set up and all that that's where we uh-huh. were going and we got that EVP that said hurt me and yeah, like when I played that for Jeff and Vicky they were like yeah that's Linda's voice you know they've heard her voice several times through EVPs over the years and they're like that's that's Linda's voice so well the audible voice that we heard up uh, next to her room um all five of us, we were uh, uh, sitting at the table outside of her room there. And I uh, said, Linda, I said, if you're here, sweetie, I said, uh, just let us know. I said, you know, we want to help you cross over, or, you know, help you in whatever way, you know, bring you peace, whatever it may be. I said, just let us know what we can do to help you. And <clears throat> I said, then I tried and tried to decipher this. And I finally got it downloaded on to my uh, laptop. It finally started working with me. And um, But it sounds like it, uh, she's saying, I've tried, but you can't hear me. Oh, wow. wow. Oh, my God. That's impressive. And That's sad. And it just, it, yeah. It, as soon as I heard that, I mean, it just, I mean, I almost choked up. I was like, wow. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Wow. And, I mean, and we all heard it with our own ears, but we, you know, we couldn't uh, make up what it said. And, um, once I put, you know, analyzed everything and uh, made the sound just a little bit louder, I, I mean, it's almost plain as day. Wow. That's wow. awesome. Well, you know, I've just got one thing to say. If people don't understand the hold and the impact that Hell's Bar Dam has on people, because, you know, we started this podcast this evening to talk about the tragedy at Tin Can Holler, and And it has morphed right back to Hell's Bar. (laughs) That place. But. It really is something else. Yeah. I mean, and just to clarify, you and your wife are going to try to come down to our event in July, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. We'll, we'll I'm so excited there. to meet you guys. Yeah. And uh, you, no, said, you're, you said your wife is wanting to go to the location in the Whirlpool room where Andrea has the bad feeling. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, wife, uh, she's felt quite a few uh, things here and there and, uh, I mean, we hate to use the word sensitive or anything like that in our group, but I mean, she she has been more sensitive to things that I've never felt, mm-hmm. and so she said that uh, once we were, me and her were watched the uh, uh, video once it was downloaded, I she's like, I have got to go to that spot. Yeah, it and is it definitely a very it's an uncomfortable feeling for me 
No joke. Every time I go up there. And well, it's like I'll, this last will, time. She didn't go even with, go. No, I didn't go up she there. She got within maybe 50 feet of the steps, and that was as far as she would go. Yeah. I, I wow. just, I, I don't know. I really have no idea. Just, I don't know what feeling I'm getting or why I'm feeling like I can't. Well, you know when we do this event. I know I'm going up there. Yeah. <laughs> or you're going to have to. You're gonna be, I know. <laughs> you're you're going to be leading a group. So I know. Your group, you're going to have to take them up I'm there. I'm going to have to suck it up. <laughs> suck it up, buttercup. <laughs> uh. My first time, actually, uh, I actually take that back. It was my second time going up uh, to the locker room area there. I uh, had my obelisk with me, my recorder, my friend Steven, who was behind me, had all of the uh, video camera equipment. And so he's following me up there. He sits inside the room, and uh, there's almost like a small box as soon as you walk inside the room over to the right-hand side. And I set my uh, recorder and the obelisk down there. Mm-hmm. And I said, um, I said, I don't know if you remember Aaron coming in here from uh, Ghost Adventures and uh, pulling on his shirt. And I said, uh, uh, so I'm trying to call you out. I said, I want you to pull on my shirt. I said, I want you to do something to me. Mm-hmm. And which is kind of bold move on my end. <laughs> <laughs> no sooner than I said that, I hear this my pecking on the uh, lockers. Really? Like, what in the hell is that? Yeah. So I go and I walk over to it and I said, "All right." I said, "I tell you what." I said, "I'm gonna go through your lockers and I'm gonna start stealing all your stuff out of it." So how you feel about that? So I opened up the first one, skipped the second one, went on down the line, and I still kept hearing that pecking noise coming back from like the first one. So as I got closer to that second locker and I'm holding my camera and I opened up and all of a sudden just out of nowhere two big huge pigeons fly right <laughs> in my face. <laughs> and <laughs> there I screamed I turned around look at my buddy Steven he's over just doubled over and laughed. Oh my god! <laughs> That's definitely going on YouTube. Those damn pigeons. <laughs> Yeah, when we were there Saturday, uh, we were on the second floor in building one and we were setting up a camera shooting down the hall and we went into the, the room there on the end to set the camera up and when me and Steve went to walk in there, there was probably 30 birds flying around in there and like we go wow. in there and we're making all kinds of noise, flapping our arms, trying to get them out of there and finally they all left but I mean, it was crazy. The birds you know, were everywhere. Oh yeah. It, if if nothing else is going to scare the crap out of you at Hillsborough, the, the birds, birds will. will. <laughs> yeah. 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 The birds totally will. <laughs> but, oh. All right. Well, we, we definitely had a great time down there. Yeah, I'm glad. And hopefully we'll have an even better time when you guys come back and investigate with us during our event. I definitely yeah, look forward to, to meeting y'all. Yeah. Uh, you as well. Well, Steve, we're going to wrap this up. And uh, again, everybody go and check out Entity Vortex Paranormal Society on Facebook. Give them a like. Uh, let them know that you heard them here on Paratalk. And uh, watch for their videos to come out. And Steve to share their evidence on this. And if you guys are interested in the tragedy at Tin Can Holler, look on Amazon. See if you can find the book. Do you know the name of the book, Steve? Is it called Tragedy? Uh, it's, it's actually called uh, Tragedy in, in Tin Can Holler. Okay. okay. All right. So just look it up on Amazon, Tragedy at Tin Can, in Tin Can Holler, and buy it and check it out. I plan on getting this uh, book yeah. and checking it out because um, I want to know this full story. And We might have to take a trip. Yeah, we may have to take a trip down to Decatur. Yep. D- Decatur. Come on down, just uh, right down the road. Sounds like a plan. Take you guys out. That sounds awesome. like a plan. Well, Steve... We appreciate you being on Paratalk, and I'm sure this will not be the last time because we're no. going to have to do some more follow-ups and all this on Hell's Bar and any other location that we may try to conquer together. Sounds great. I appreciate you guys having me on tonight. All right, Absolutely. brother. We, you have a good evening, and we will talk to you next time. Uh, you guys do the same. Appreciate it. All right. See you. See bye. ya. All right. That was Steve Phillips yes. with entity vortex paranormal society evps and that great guy great guy really nice guy really nice guy yeah and he knew his facts about this tin can hauler thing i'm i'm actually picking up my phone right now to look for this book (laughs) because i'm like super interested in this yeah i mean i really really like talking to someone that 
has all the details and all the facts. And you can tell he has studied this big time. He's totally interested in it. And I can really appreciate that. You know how I am. Oh, yeah. I, like, when I go to buy anything or get into research. anything. Research. I am so Captain much research. research. Yeah. Just so but. you guys know, um, I found this book on Amazon or you can buy it used for twelve forty nine, or buy it new for seventeen ninety nine. However, just to give y'all a little heads up, there is a website called Sorry, Slow Internet Textbookrush dot com. Oh, I thought Slow Internet was the no, website. no, no, no. Oh, okay. I was complaining yeah. that we have slow internet. My well, phone was not working well. Well, you know, the boys are probably back here playing video Probably. Games. Yeah. But the website is called textbookrush.com, and they have it for $7.13. It awesome. is used, but still, you can get it new for fifteen fifty two. Awesome. So it's out there, and it looks yeah. fantastic, yeah. and I will be buying that. Can I just say, I'm sorry. I love you, honey, but I miss Jesse and Steve. I know. Yeah. <laughs> this has been like the quietest podcast in a long time. Well, it's a good thing that, that we had Steve Phillips. I know, yeah. because we needed another Steve in this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but just so you guys know, we are doing another podcast tomorrow, which will, when you listen to this, will probably be tomorrow? tonight. Or tomorrow. So, yeah, well. That's what I'm saying. It'll be tomorrow when they hear this, so it'll be tonight. Yes. Yes. I'm only a little confused. I got gotcha. you. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, but uh, we are interviewing someone in the big foot genre yes would that be cryptozoology that would be cryptozoology <gasps> this is our first isn't this it this is our first cryptozoology oh my gosh and how everybody bad, be ready for the bigfoot yeah how bad have i been wanting to do an episode on cryptozoology oh my gosh i See, mean he's pretty much a bigfoot fanatic i'm a bigfoot freak. i mean That's why he I, has a bigfoot yeah, I do. Size 15. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's his brother. Maybe. <gasps> you're related. I'm related to Sasquatch. That's why you're so hairy, too. That's, you're so cute. That's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, it kind of was, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so tomorrow night we are interviewing this lady, and I can't, honestly, right now, her name goes past me i can't even remember her name but we will have that straightened out by tomorrow night brain fart uh, yeah and uh hopefully jesse will be joining us for this because i know jesse's into the bigfoot uh, thing. yeah so i mean i dabble in the bigfoot i'm not like major fan i'll watch things i'll look you know i'll read into some stuff but i just don't want to meet him in my backyard See. Okay, maybe that'd be kind of cool. As long as I'm inside, he's not. As long as you have Jax links, you should be all right. Just throw <laughs> Jax links. Yeah. Beef jerky. Yeah. Throw it at him. <laughs> throw Bigfoot beef jerky, and you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you would think that it was like midnight again. Wrong, yeah, maybe. Yeah. I'm wrong. yeah. You are wrong, mm -hmm. sir. But. Yeah, it's not even near midnight. I know. Yeah, it's ten twelve p.m. And we're already Eastern delirious? Standard Time. Well, we have been up early. I've been up since four thirty this morning. Yeah. Because I had to be at work at well, I have to be at work till six thirty, but I get there at like ten till six because I'm just that guy that can't be late for anything. That's unlike true. you. That is not completely true. I can be on time. <laughs> you can be on I time. I can be. But... The kids make me late. Okay. Yeah. No yeah. joke. Yeah. I was ready for like 10 minutes this morning waiting for them. Well, that's when you put your foot in their ass. No, because I had on good shoes. Wow. <laughs> this is what I live with, ladies and gentlemen. This is what I live with. 
All right. Well, we're going to head and we will be back for another episode tomorrow night. And it will probably go up Sunday or maybe I'll make you guys wait till Tuesday or Wednesday. Don't make him do that. Make him rush. <laughs> Tell him you want the new episode ASAP. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me that. Because you want, because you know, you want to hear about Bigfoot. Mm hmm. I can't wait. I'm I mean, totally okay, no joke. This. I'm I am really excited about hearing what she has to say. Mm -hmm. I mean, anybody that has actually seen with their own eyes, right? Like legit. You can't give anything away. Okay, that's tomorrow's right. podcast. My bad. Anybody that is you know that into Bigfoot, mm -hmm. I mean that that's interesting. That yeah. is very interesting. So I am excited about it. Yeah. It's going to be fun. Yes. And um, you guys can also check out Vodka and Ghosts yeah. podcast because uh, we're going to be interviewed by them Monday night. Yes. And looking forward to that. That will go up one day next week. Um, if you guys haven't checked these girls out, they, they're hilarious. They have, tonight they're recording their third. Mm -hmm. So they're very new, very green. But they are freaking hilarious. Oh, yeah. I mean, you listened to, what, 20 minutes of a podcast, and you were laughing your butt off. I was. I mean, yeah. I, I don't have the mouth that they do, so I think my G rate and their R rate is really going to clash, but it's going to be funny. You live with me. I do. Yeah. And, it's going to be hilarious and, because and, they're hilarious. You know, and Steve. I know. Yeah. I live with a bunch of goobers. Yeah. It's going to be fun. It is. I'm it's excited. It's going to be fun. They're hilarious. But yeah, so guys, go check out uh, uh, Vodka and Ghosts. They're on Facebook. They're on Stitcher, just like us, um, on Apple Podcast. Just, if you can't remember, think Vag. Yeah. yeah. It's the Vagcast. Bless it. <laughs> You're so special. I kind of am. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so check that out. And... Uh, one more thing, if you guys, when you guys listen to these podcasts, if you guys would give us a rating, that would be so awesome, because if you guys rate us, you know, then that helps us get pushed up in the line where people, it's easier for people to find us. And let um, us know if you like us, or if you don't. Are we good, <laughs> or, or are, are we, we bad? bad? But, hashtag sweet tea. Yeah, hashtag sweet tea. But, um, one more time, uh, everybody go check out our facebook page east tennessee ghost seekers it's east tn ghost seekers check out our website east tn ghost seekers.org uh check out our buddies gateway paranormal society um you'll find them on facebook and on all the social media outlets i can't yeah. remember all their their handles for there's the different ones there's an ad in there yeah there's an ad in there somewhere um, check out our buddy Steve that we just talked to at Entity Vortex Paranormal Society. Uh, check out the Haunted Hells Bar uh, and wait, uh, I haunted, forgot. Damn. Yes. Yeah, damn it, I forgot. <laughs> the Haunted Hells Bar. Damn. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. Freaking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I've got that one too. Son of a bitch. <laughs> 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 You thought I was going to say a son of a bitch, didn't you? Yeah, probably. <laughs> but, um, who else am I forgetting? Um, and then, of course, Vodka and Ghost. Yes. Vag. Yes. Check out the Vag. <laughs> I am face palming right now. <laughs> uh, I uh, wish you guys could see this. And like, I'm SMH, <laughs> shaking my head. I felt like a gynecologist when I said that. Check out the Vag. Where's that crickets button at? Right here. That, that works. That yeah, works. That works. Yeah. I need that button over here. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, just uh, when you listen to our podcast, if you could just give us a rating, uh, say something. If And if there's anything that you want us to discuss, if there's a topic that you want to hear about, dude, We're pretty shoot open us a to message. It. Shoot us a message. Uh, you can uh, comment on our podcast. Let us know what you want to hear us talk about, and we will research, and we will talk about it. We like talking. 
we will talk about some of the stupidest shit you guys have ever heard. I if mean, you haven't already well, figured that out. Yeah. We're how many how many episodes uh, in? <laughs> 17 or 18. Yeah. Right, something like that. If you're new to this. Yeah. yeah <laughs> if you're new to this, we're 17 or 18 and we talk about some stupid shit. But we also talk serious we do. about some things. Um, There's a lot of serious stuff in the world and, you know, we do touch base on yeah. all of that as well yeah we do we're not complete idiots no but we do like to have fun and yes. we hope that you guys like to have fun and we hope that you guys have fun listening to us um if we make you lol then we're good yeah yeah laugh out loud lol lol <laughs> lol all right <laughs> well until next time you have been listening to pair talk and i'm steven and i'm andrea and we will see you guys next time Hey, it's Stephen from Paratalk. Do you have a story to share? Call us at 865-264-0448 to explain your paranormal experience, or to share your favorite ghost story, or to even give us a topic you'd like us to discuss. We understand if you want to keep anonymous, so the choice is yours to share your name with your story. So call 865-264-0448 now, and have your experiences heard on the next episode of Paratalk, Paratalk, Paratalk. Paranormal Talk Radio.